Welcome everyone, whoever is watching. This week, uh, I'm with Irishka. It's supposed to be an interview, but we decided to call it discussion since she has questions for me and I also have questions for her. First, we're going to um, introduce ourselves first <laughs> so that um, everyone will know a little about ourselves. So let me go ahead first. Um, I'm Jessa. I am Oliver's wife. Um, I have been um, in some of his uh, YouTube videos in the past. So if you have watched that, um, I was there. <laughs> so I'm an, uh, I am married to John for six years or Oliver for six years. And I'm an atheist for more than 10 years i'm uh i was an atheist first before uh john became an atheist so i was uh, an atheist longer than he was and um we're from uh, mindanao butuan specifically uh, so i don't know irishka personally but i know she told me Na she's one of the chapter heads for the Philippine Atheism, Agnosticism, and Secularism Patas in Davao. Yes, Patas mm. Davao. Patas Davao. She's married to Ace, na head din sa Patas Davao. And uh, we're going to, she and I, we're going to um, talk about beliefs, our stance, and a lot more. Hope. Hopefully. So, Irishka, mm -hmm. please uh, introduce yourself. Thank you, Jessa. So, hello, everyone. So, I'm Irishka, and um, let's just say I've been a lifelong unbeliever since I was 13, but I've come to embrace labeling myself as agnostic atheist when I was 18. So, that was more than 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. And I'm also married to an atheist. And we run Patas Davao together. It's Philippine atheism, agnosticism, and secularism. So, yeah. Thank you, Irishka. Welcome and thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining John the Atheist channel. Um, thank you for the chance as well. No problem. Thank you. So um, we have just uh, for a little background, we Erishka and I decided that we are going to to speak English and Tagalog a little bit because we're both awkward to speak Tagalog fluently. <laughs> um, and of course, Bisaya is our viewers. Char and <laughs> viewers from Luzon will not understand. Uh, some, most of them will not understand. So, we're going to just a little background on uh, language for this video. So, Irishka, you mentioned that you've been an, a, a non believer, right? For yes. yeah, a long time. Wow. You mentioned you were 13. 13. So, wow. So, you were <laughs> so young. <laughs> Um, how, can you share us your story kung paano ka naging unbeliever at such a young age? Well, okay, just to give a glimpse of my background, I came from a diverse cultural and mm -mm, cultural and in terms of religious family as well. So my dad is um, a Baptist Luther, but his father was a converted Christian uh, with Jewish um, ancestry. And then I'm not sure with my grandma because um, basically from because I haven't really met her. She passed away when I was very little. And um, I think she's Islam because my dad still has siblings that are um, under Islam. And my mom is a Calvinist Baptist. So my grandpa used to be the president of Gideon's. Um, if you're familiar, Gideon's the Bible. <laughs> yeah, they're Calvinists. And um, her mom, my grandma, was a converted from Catholic 
uh, into Christian something and also has um, Sephardic, Sephardic lineage. And um, I started questioning when I was seven. So very early for seven years old. And then I was told about this and that about the Bible because my family is um, fundamentalist in some sense, even if my father is um, a Luther and my mom's a Calvinist. So the common denominator is they're both um, Protestant or evangelical. So when I was seven, I started questioning things, but then I wasn't really satisfied with the answer. When I was 13, I was a complete skeptic already, but I really wanted to believe. I still wanted to believe, you know, um, for all those years I've been hiding because I'm still convincing myself, even if, even if my heart is just not in it, I don't believe in a deity at all. But at some point, I'm still pushing myself that there might be and I could be wrong because I have no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. There's no adult guiding me in whatever spiritual journey I've been venturing at that such a young age. And also, I'm afraid of the judgment, the condemnation. So, and when I was 16, I have a cousin. Um, she's actually my aunt, but because of the age gap, we're just like cousins. So she gave me a Bible thinking that I might be enlightened with that Bible. And because she was already having that hint that you're really an atheist, you just don't want to accept it. You just don't want to um, face the fact that you're already um, into eternal damnation. Exactly. <laughs> and of course, I don't want that. Who wants eternal damnation? So um, when I was 16, she gave me a Bible, and then I started reading that Bible from cover to cover. And I realized, is this actually the God that they're following, uh, that I was made to believe? And I was convincing myself to believe this isn't the God that, who's worthy to be worshipped. This isn't the God that I wanted to be worshipped. Uh, so um, it, it started from there. After it was a CEV, um, Contemporary English Version. After that, I evolved from King James because they were saying you should read the King James because it's the most like close to accurate mm -hmm. translation. So after the King James, it's still basically different translation, the same BS. So I did try the NIV because they said it's the most um, <laughs> layman kind of okay. translation. So must misunderstandable now. And then I also read the NIV after the NIV, the um, SEV. And after that, it's basically the same. Nothing happened. I really wanted to have that um, life-changing God experience, even if for someone who's an unbeliever, I wanted that. I, in fact, even up to now, whenever I'm seeing or I'm hearing people pray, I envy them because I wanted to pray like that, but I don't pray. So mm. after I had friends who are Islam, who are, um, who are patient enough to do the Islamic translation for me. So I did study the, their Quran and I didn't stop from there. I did study the Torah, which led me to study basic Hebrew for that. So, and wow, okay. the Rig Veda, the Rig Veda. And then I did study the histor history of um, how Christianity started and other religions started. And when I was, a I think, 18, 18. So my dad found those books that I've been reading and he told me I have to drop those because it's confusing me. I ha only have to choose one book which is King James. And I was like, why would I need to choose one book? Then maybe it's all BS because if it's really real, then they shouldn't have um, different translation. So yeah, I was 18 when I realized, okay, so I don't believe in anything at all. Why would I really force myself to believe in a God or to just for me to fit in? Mm. And it started from there. Yeah. Wow, thanks for sharing that. That's mm -hmm. actually amazing. I guess I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Uh, it's amazing because you actually read a lot of versions of the Bible. <laughs> I only I read did. 
<laughs> I only read, I think, NIV the uh, from cover to cover when I was 17. Mm -hmm. um, and then, <laughs> but you, you read King James <sighs> Version, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the one that you said, the uh, uh, contemporary English. Contemporary version. English, yeah. So you read a lot of versions of the Bible and you're still saying they're the same for you and um, it's just different way of translation translating it so mm -hmm. you were um 70, 18 when you accepted the label yeah. atheist mm, agnostic atheist okay more on agnostic <laughs> okay hmm. i see so um did you come out to your family or to some friends when you accepted uh, agnostic atheism label i didn't i didn't but my um my parents knew already maybe they were just they were just in denial that because I, I defected from church very early. I started not going to church at, at 12, 13. Even if my, my parents have all the effort to send me to youth camps for me to be enlightened, but it, it just didn't work. I, I even got, um, I'm not sure if kidnap would be the, wor the, the, the word, uh, but it happened later on. I was already an atheist. Uh, a friend invited me for a um, concert, but I didn't know it's going to be like a complete immersion kind of con, not concert, but it's a, a spiritual immersion something from the church. It started from 8 a.m. and it did end it from 11 p.m. and everyone else was like um, falling on their knees. They have that is, um, experience about spirit and stuff and i was like why isn't this happening to me i wanted that to happen to me but it's simply not so i think that's the time really where i really accepted but maybe my mind is just too strong to you know for are not too gullible for these things i see so um your family knew but it you they just need confirmation from you that you were you were finally an, an agnostic atheist by mm -hmm. uh, the time you were 18. So how about your friends? Um, did they feel bad when they found out? They didn't really know. And I didn't necessarily come out to my friends. Mm. In fact, um, I let them figure it out. I... I don't go around telling people like, oh, hey, I'm an atheist. I don't mm -hmm. believe in your God. If someone would like come to me and tell me, can I pray for you? Okay, sure. It's just prayer. I, I don't. Um, I don't argue. Um, I'm not the debate type really mm -hmm. of uh, an unbeliever because you will just end up running in circles if you're going to debate with a theist. So I really avoid having those conversations. So I never come out to my friends. And they just basically figured it out, perhaps. Uh, because of the stigma around the label, um, Yerishka, were there friends who disconnected or <laughs> unfriended you <laughs> when they found out? Mm, well, I'm not sure with the unfriend thing, but I guess because... Um, we're adults, legal adults, and we have different lives and we were busy with our um, careers as well. I'm not really sure if it has something to do with that or it would be easier for them to like um, stay away from me because we have reasons um, like we're busy or something. Mm -hmm. But I do have a friend whom I did come out to just very recently thinking that she have figured it out long ago because we did went to church and at that time she was a deist and at that time i was going to that church because um after a while i've been invited by a friend and um let's just say because my my dad would like always remind me you have to go to church and i feel like i needed a place for him to like shut 
Um, and not remind me. And I did just try going to that church. And apparently, I liked the speaker because very eloquent and very li- ano lang siya mag-talk, um, layman lang. Mm-mm. So, yeah. And I went there for couples of sessions. And then my friend, whom, who was a DS at that time, uh, she was with me and we were just talking about how we don't like religion, but okay, we appreciate religion. This, that does not force people to convert into their religion. So recently, um, we were having a discussion because of the Pascal's wager. So she told me she felt bad for me for being an atheist and that she is praying for me so that I would be enlightened. But overall, mm-hmm. it was a healthy discussion. Mm-hmm. I, I told her um, uh, it does not it does not make you less of my friend just because we have different views on that. But however it is, um, I, I'm not really asking you to or to convert or to say or to think that I'm right. Because I understand that we have different perspective, and then basically the conversation ended. I don't know if it was awkward, but I think it is. So, but I don't really have issue <laughs> no issue with it. So, okay. I see, but of course, now that um, you're an adult, you have uh, a different uh, perspective now when it comes to the Bible, but. Going back to when you were 18, Irishka, mm. did you have like a triggering or a strong emotions against the Bible and that made you an atheist? And what was it? Mm, yeah, I did. So basically, it was in Mark. I forgot the exact one. It was some uh, a passage in Mark that says, okay. if you believe in God, even if you drink poison, then you will not die. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> I've also read um, how the Bible are, you know, the Bible can be very much patriarchal or sexist because how come a woman can be allowed to me, um, a woman can't be allowed to be divorced to his hus- to her husband. However, a husband or the guy is okay whether he could have multiple wives. So, and there was this um, there was a story as well. This wasn't taught in Sunday schools about Onan. God killed him because he refused to have sex with his sister-in-law, and. Yeah. Infanticide, genocide, everything is in the Bible. Slavery, it was sanctioned in the Bible. So it's something that confuses me because how come he is depicted as that all-loving God? In fact, he was a wrathful kind of God, an insecure one, narcissistic, egomaniac. <laughs> um, kind of uh, <laughs> remind me of uh, the things that I also... Uh, dislike or hate uh Mm -hmm. in the bible yeah when i was 17 or 18 i forgot my i was uh first year college so that was 17 i was 17 when i read the uh the entire bible and i remember i was triggered not triggered kasi ako dati sa verses na very anti-women anti-anti-woman in the Bible, so it left a very strong distaste in my mouth, <laughs> in in my brain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but how does it feel like to be an atheist and a woman? Because I watch John the Atheist cha- channel and other atheist channels in the f- in in the country in the Philippines and. Most, maybe all of them are men. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think wala akong nakita pang babae na nag-spearhead talaga na mag, mag, mag YouTube channel na atheism yung topic. So how mm-hmm. does it feel like to be an atheist, uh, a woman atheist, Irishka? Hmm. 
I honestly don't know. And regarding with the YouTube, I did attempted to have like a podcast, pero because of I wanted to talk about like evolution and mm -hmm. atheism, but more on like educating the viewers or listeners if it's possible. Um, yeah, I did write down like possible contents, pero because um, I've been also busy and at the same time i'm not really techy i don't know how to edit or <laughs> uh, anything that has something to do with the computer so para hindi siya na ano or na contemplate ako for i don't know a year already since i started having those um thoughts of wanting to have uh, my own podcast yeah but uh, Maybe in the workshop, maybe next year. I really don't know. Because I already have recorded it, but hindi ko lang talaga siya na-upload or anything. <laughs> I understand, yeah. Because um, uh, John also encouraged me to have my own channel, sa uh, YouTube channel. And I'm not, I feel like not techy enough when it comes to editing so, tinutulungan niya ako. But, uh, sometimes, <laughs> hindi talaga na-upload agad. So, mm -hmm. so many delays. Just like you, Irishka. So, Maybe we should do a YouTube together. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, my, uh, maybe, it's not a final question, Irishka, but I just want Maybe I, I have some follow-up questions when you answer my, my uh, upcoming question. But uh, my question is, what are your plans uh, for Patas Davao? I want to know kasi may mga fees kasi na natatakot na mag manood ng mga videos about atheism mm -hmm. because they might um, lose <laughs> or doubt their faith. Or they might get converted. So, mm -hmm. what are your plans for Patas Davao? Mango convert ka ba? Nang uh, theist to become atheist? Or <laughs> just to make things clear mm -hmm. to our theist viewers, if meron? Well, just to make things clear, we're not, I don't speak for the rest of Patas, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Because, uh, there are a lot of chapters as well. So Davao is just one of the few chapters. Um, we have a main, but we, as an, as an agnostic atheist, we also differ from one perspective to another. Yes. Some atheists might have that intent of converting, mm -hmm. but I don't. And okay. neither, neither does my husband. We don't, but however... We have this intent of educating people about what is agnosticism or what is atheism, okay? And more like letting them know that we are normal people. We are social animals just like every other theist there is. So we have our mor morality as well. And um, it, it's not true just because you are a heathen doesn't mean you don't have your sense of morality. In fact, we even have a much more higher sense of spirituality compared to any other theist because we have that, um, let's just say, relationship with reality and our inner self. So, wala akong plano mag-convert. Um, some theists, uh, or if you're watching, you don't really have to fear us <laughs> or fear me <laughs> or fear any atheist dyan kasi um, I really don't mind. So, you can... Kahit makipag-debate kayo sa akin or what, I'm not really gonna answer because I don't like running in circles. So you are entitled to your own belief. I am entitled to my own. Same with any other theist and non-believers also. So, yeah. Thank you for um, making sure our theists, <laughs> viewers, <laughs> uh, do not uh, fear us, uh, Irishka. I, well, I prepared five to six questions for you, so you answered them both, uh, all of them. Uh, what about you? Do you have anything for me? Well, I do have 
six questions for you. These are the very basic questions okay. every believers would okay. throw on an atheist. So I wanted to know your perspective yeah. lang on that. Sure. So how can you be moral without believing in God? Wow. Um, I used to I used to think or parang paano when I finally accepted uh, the label atheist, I was also wondering how can I be moral without God? But then I I am a, a reader, a wide reader. So I uh, when when I read a book and when I finish a book, I always make sure na mag review ako or mag mag reflect on what I read. So I ask other people whenever I finish a book what their comments are or opinions are when it comes to different topics, especially or specifically the book that I just read. So for example, parang when I read a book about domestic violence, I ask uh, my brother-in-law uh, what he thinks about domestic violence to women and to men. So um, that's how one, one of the things that I realized na how I was able to parang na-realize ko na I can be moral just just as long as wala akong naaapakan na other people and I don't do the things that I wouldn't be um, like be done to me, something like that. So parang in a way, mas if you compare it to the Bible, it's like, it's like for me, ha, um, I'm not, speaking in in behalf of everyone so for me it's when you realize that doing something wrong or bad um you get to to feel or empathize um other people before you do the things that you want to do to them and not because god made me do it or god's this is god's law so i should do it so Parang na-realize ko before na, what if God would command that rape is fine or killing is fine? Would I do that? I wouldn't because I wouldn't want that to happen to me. So that's how I, that's what my thought process when it comes to being moral without God. Thank you for that. Well, Honestly, this is an unbelievably insulting question. It is. Being moral, caring about others, and having compassion for them is very fundamental part of being human. And to question whether atheists can be moral to express bafflement at how we could like possibly manage to care about other um, others without believing in their sky daddy or <laughs> in a mm -hmm. supernatural creator. It's also to question whether we are fully human at all. So, um, from my perspective as well, this question is also hugely insulting, not just to us heathens, but also to religious believers, because it's basically saying that the only reason um, believers are moral is, like what you've said as well, fear of punishment and desire for reward. Mm -hmm. So, it's basically saying that believers don't act out of compassion or a sense of justice it's like um, them uh, <laughs> saying that morality their be uh, believers morality is childish at best and self-serving at worst so parang kasi we are um as humans pa, we are social animals and like other social animals we evolved with some core moral values not necessarily r religious but you know wired values into our brains caring about fairness caring about loyalty and others are um caring when others are harmed so for me 
we are moral at the same reason that believers are moral because we have a sense of justice or compassion unless na lang psychopath or sociopath <laughs> yeah so that's true <laughs> another question is how do you find meaning in your life as an atheist ah good question um to be honest well at the, for me ha, there really is no meaning sa life you get born um you you get raised by parents or not raised by parents and then you work you go to school you work and then you die so just to be blunt uh for me walang meaning ang life but as an atheist you find meaning out of little things um whatever makes you become interested or whatever makes you become engaged and happy you do it as long as wala ka talagang na aapakan na other people so that's how i find meaning in my life like um i love crocheting <laughs> mm-hmm. i love to crochet i love to read books so whenever i feel like um life is meaningless i look forward to tomorrow uh just thinking that i have i still have a lot of things that i want to do with my with myself with my husband with my family so it's not really um meaningless uh in the end parang you find meaning when you share the things that you want to share with your loved ones that's it mm-hmm. yeah um i completely agree with you as well because well um experiencing meaning and value in life is deeply ingrained in being human and when believers treat us heathens as if we're dead inside or we're empty simply because <laughs> we don't believe in their um su- supernatural creator or our very own immortality it's they're treating us as if we're weren't fully human i get offended when some people would ask me um why are or what would be your life meaning if that's the case especially that question came from you know from people that are close to, uh, well let's just say relatives so as an agnostic atheist the fact that life is finite invested with more meaning and not less so in my perspective when we accept that life will really like end we become much more motivated to make every moment of it like count or matter so just like believers we find meaning and joy in the same things everyone does we find it in the big things for family friendship work nature learning or love also from the small things cookies video games or playing with puppies so <laughs> the only difference i think is that believers think like you said as well you know meaning is given to them by their god or gods whilst um us as heathens we create our own meaning and we are also willing and indeed happy to accept that responsibility so i don't know if this question annoys you but it does to me isn't atheism just another religion it is annoying <laughs> <laughs> um it's not uh it's just your response to the religious claim that there is a god so it's not really a religion uh just so everyone knows we don't follow someone <laughs> like a book science book or <laughs> someone a scientist that we follow as a leader and we don't have dogma so it's how do you define religion by the way isn't it um like f- following a certain ru- certain rules na they have to do it or else they 
they will go to hell or something bad will happen to them or their God will become angry. We don't have that. Um, it's just, uh, it's just a response. Atheism is just a response sa theistic claims na God exists. So, I am not convinced that God exists. So, that's it. It's just, um, a response to what you what they say what what they they have said for many years yeah and it, it yeah. is an annoying question <laughs> they always associate atheism with satanism or satan worshipers so yeah it's very annoying because unless they're really defining um quote unquote religion as any you know, conclusion people come to about uh, about the world or as any community organized around a shared idea, then it is not by any means. Because we have our common denominator is the lack of belief. However, we have different beliefs. And you might have a different perspective as an atheist. I might have a different perspective as, as someone, uh, as an unbeliever myself. So calling atheism a religion assumes that it's, you know, it's like an ashram accepted on faith, not a conclusion based on thinking and evidence. So it also shows that you're not willing to be able to consider the possibility that someone not only has a different or unconventional opinion about religion than you do, but has come to also to that opinion in a different way. So parang, um, you know, if their religion includes atheism, it, it should also include like Amnesty International or the Audubon Society or heliocentrism, the acceptance of the theory of evolution or the flying monster spaghetti. The Justin Bieber fan club, what else? The Democratic Party, Liberal Party, any other party. So by any useful definition of the word religion, well, atheism is not a religion. I really don't know why hanggang ngayon, it's still an argument or some theists would still have the audacity to insist that. Exactly. I agree. So parang... Sometimes when a theist would say that to me, um, parang hindi ko na siya pinakikigan or uh, hindi, hindi na ako nag engage in a, in a debate. But of course, it's wrong because it could be a chance for me to be educational when it comes to um, my disbelief. But um, kasi parang that's a very old very old question na nasagot na before so um sometimes i get i get too annoyed that i don't um answer anymore um mm. when a theist would say or ask that to me yeah. well basically there are a lot of answered questions already but still they're not satisfied with the answer so yeah. parang that's why i don't really like having debates on theists because there's really no point for example my next question to you uh this is very common when they say why do you hate god so much or you maybe you're just angry at god <laughs> that's true so what would be your say on that <laughs> well it's like saying <laughs> i don't know it's like saying um i'm angry at voldemort for <laughs> i'm angry at voldemort for for being a a murderous villain in the harry potter universe but voldemort kasi um it's a fictional character so i don't know i have how can I answer it? Um, it's like being angry at something that, for me, don't even exist. So, <laughs> so how can I be angry at or be or how can I be angry at something that 
I don't even care and I don't even believe exist. So parang it, it's like that for me. So it's very it's difficult to explain at the same time na but I know there's a better way of saying it na you can't be mad or angry or be hateful to something that I don't believe exists. How about you, Irishka? Um, what do you say to theists who say that? <laughs> Ay, honestly, um, well, this question doesn't just deny our humanity. It also denies our very existence. You know, um, it assumes that as heathens, don't, we don't really exist and that our non-belief isn't even sincere at all. So that it's some sort of an uh, emotional trauma or immature teenage rebellion that it's not even a really non-belief. Because it, it, this one is also connected to the atheism is just a religion. So parang they were thinking that uh, um, you're just being uh, a rebel. You know, and honestly, this question also reveals how narrow that person who would ask that, uh, how narrow can be their mind is. Because it would show that they can't even consider the possibility that, um, you know, that might be mistaken, that they might be mistaken, or that they can't even conceive of somebody seeing the world differently from the way they actually do. At saka, another thing, because this question doesn't just make atheists mad. It makes us um, look like adults because we aren't angry at God because we don't even think he, ex he, she, or it exists. We're not angry, but any more than we aren't angry at Santa Claus or, like you said, Voldemort. Mm. So it, it, it does not make any sense to me, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't. So, pag may natatanong, um, okay, ganun na, okay, bala ka. I mean, yeah. I, I, I need not justify myself because useless. You wouldn't be happy with my answer either. So, <laughs> but for, or, eto, another one, Jessa. Very common as well, especially for fundamentals. Because you've read the Bible out of context. Ah, yeah. I really hate that. Um, because uh, recently, my mom and I uh, had a like a heated discussion when it comes to um, interpretation of the Bible. Because um, she's a Catholic, but she belongs to an a community, a religious community organization um, under Catholicism na parang more on Jesus. I don't know. So, Jesus naman silang lahat. <laughs> yeah, but, but they, yeah, but they're still under Catholic. So, mm -hmm. um, we, my mom and I had a heated discussion na I asked her, why is it that when it's a good verse, <laughs> a good verse from the Bible, it's taken literally. But when it's a bad verse or um, like a verse that would, for sure, you would cherry pick because it because the the content is um, very controversial, like slavery or um, homosexuality or murder or incest why is it suddenly <laughs> the meaning changes um suddenly it it should be taken uh not literally but figuratively so parang it makes god untouchable parang ganun parang <laughs> parang hindi mo siya pwedeng ma-question because of what the believers would say na they would defend it uh, if it's a good verse 
it's literal, if it's a bad verse, it's figurative. So how can you, <laughs> how do you even know which one is literal, which one is uh, figurative? or like a symbolism or something. So, yeah, I don't get it as well. I, I ask them, but like you said, Irishka, it's, it, can be, it can be a debate that uh, goes around in circle. Because some theists, they don't understand. They don't understand why you ask that question those kinds of questions yeah um there's also bestiality in the bible right yes and grab it like it's cognitive dissonance because when you ask them if you believe in unicorns no it's a fictional character made for little young, little girls but then the unicorn is described in the bible dragons are described in the bible uh the talking snake or the serpent so what makes it not real but then your god is real so the usual because we asked the holy spirit about it and then the holy spirit told us this and that of course your holy spirit would be always um aligned with your very own sense of morality whether you believe in your own morality or your biblical morality but you know to be quite honest i'm not saying that we are better individuals um, because I know there are smart theists. There are also jackass atheists. But more, um, I've noticed there are more um, uh, heathens that are better informed about religion than most religious believers themselves. In fact, we are also better informed about the tenets of most specific religions than the believers in those religions. And also for many, for many um, heathens, okay, atheists, agnostics, and secularists, however they want to label themselves, uh, sitting down and reading the Bible or any other holy text or whatever uh, they're, they're brought up in is exactly what set them on the path to uh, atheism. So in my case, it happened to me because I've been skeptic, but then after reading the Bible, Yun siya yung like, snap moment ko, like, wake up. I really have to accept myself as me not believing because this is bullcrap. This book is basically just like any other folktale that I've <laughs> read. Or, you know, it's basically, you know, what put the final nail in the coffin for most of us reading the Bible compared to other theists who does not even know about their Bible. And, you know, are, are they really not aware of how dominating forced religion is in society? To say, in most part of the world, religion is impossible to ignore. You know, it permeates the social life, economic life. For example, in the Philippines, churches meddles too much with politics. So cultural, cultural and political life. And then we're soaking in it, basically. So the idea that atheism or atheists might somehow have you know come to adulthood without being aware of the bible or of the stories about supposed miracles or favors you know of stories about personal religious experience to me it's um it's laughable or it would be laughable if it weren't really like so annoying and you harmful know? Yes, and harmful. Religious privilege is all over this question, like you know, uh, a cheap, uh, a cheap suit. So, yeah, <laughs> nakainis lang. Like, I, I've I've been told that a lot. I've been told a lot. Like, me, you did not understand the Bible that you read. Like, okay, so how do I, <laughs> how am I supposed to understand that? Yeah, you lack. Um, the spiritual guidance when you were reading the mm. Bible, Erishka. That's why you didn't understand. <laughs> Maybe. And I'm not because I really want that spiritual, uh, godly experience. But I really don't understand why. Maybe, maybe, I uh, know, my favorite is Sims God. So <laughs> it's basically, um, I think people who are parang hindi nila na intindihan yung privilege nila. Because 
how is it any different for you, you know, compared to the starving children of Africa or the slaves that are in the Middle East? Diba? What makes you favored because you believe in a God? Like, it's all BS. Parang, it's BS. Another question would be a very, the most annoying of them all. Save ko talaga siya. Okay. Save ko siya. <laughs> the best <laughs> for the last. What if, Jessa, you are wrong? Pascal Swinger. <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. What if all the other religions are wrong and and I'm the only one that's right? Parang parang you can parang in a way you can switch or question them, question the question back to them. <laughs> oh, parang ganon. So what if? You're wrong, and the Quran is the right one. And what if, what if Jesus was mistaken, and it was really uh, Muhammad and Allah who were right? How would you know si that? Kibuloy. Right? Oh, si Kibuloy, because he's the appointed son of God. So, mm-hmm. diba? So, how would we know Kibuloy is not the appointed son of God? Mm. So I remember, right? So Pascal's wager, kasi parang you're you're only asking the question to one God. Parang what about mm-hmm. the other gods, right? Are you gonna waste your time um, believing in whichever God you would believe? Kasi just in case there's hell. So, <laughs> but in other religions, naman wala naman silang hell, right? So. <laughs> Which ones would you believe? So, parang it's a matter of respect to your intelligence kasi when you, when you don't waste your time believing in a God for me. Yeah, kasi ang Pascal's wager, um, it's like playing it safe, you know? Parang you have to secure yourself, uh, I wouldn't go to hell. Kasi yun naman yung pinapoint niya. But they've missed out. They've missed out the part. Like, there's just, you know, it's just one religion compared to the 5,000 plus gods <laughs> na recorded Ooh. God. Yeah, and like, can I quote um, Homer Simpson when he said, um, what if we pick the wrong religion? You know, every week we're just making God matter and matter. And also, sometimes... It's being asked, kasi, um, remember, I have a friend who nag-come out ako, but then, yun, we were talking about the Pascal's wager. So, it's, on her side, doesn't it make logical sense to believe in God? Like, if you believe and, you know, you're wrong, nothing terrible happens. But if you don't believe and you're wrong, you could go to hell. So, and I completely agree with you. What if... um like you're wrong about Allah or um sino tong Hindu god Vishnu <laughs> Vishnu or or Zeus mm-hmm. you know what if you're wrong about whether god is the wrathful jerk who hates gay people or the loving god who hates homophobes or what if you're wrong about whether god wants you to celebrate the um, sabbath sabbath or the uh, saturday or sunday or what if you're wrong about whether God really does care about whether you eat bacon or ano ba? Because there are so many things wrong with this question, you know. Um, it even has this name, the wager, Pascal's wager. And after that discussion, after that discussion with that with that friend, I've actually written like an entire peace wow. you know on the many things <laughs> that are wrong with it yeah by the way she does not identify herself as christian because she's not a religious Tao, but she calls herself godly so <laughs> but when you know but okay. after that one i'll just i'll just stick to um with two out of the things that i've observed during the discussion that we had with the pascal's wager so 
you the ones that aren't just logically ab- absurd but you know like you said as well insult the intelligence and integrity of both atheists and believers so one would be so are you really that ignorant of the existence of religion other than your own you know like i says has it really like never occurred to to them that you know when you bet on the existence of of your god um there are thousands upon um thousands of other gods who's also existence um you're betting against you know and are you really that steep not only in the generic privilege of all the religion but also in the particular privilege of your own and then second would be when do they really think that us as atheists have so little integrity because it's kind of like really annoying it's really getting into my nerves you know um do you re- do they really think that we're going to um fake a belief in god not just to our families or communities in order to not be ostracized um you know but in our own hearts and minds is ano wala talaga it, 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 wala <laughs> talaga yeah like they even have they even considered like you know going to deliberately con ourselves into believing or pretending to believe you know something that we don't actually think is true or not just something trivial but something like this one is important because um you know f- for my freedom of speech we also have that freedom to think freely for ourselves as well you know and do they also think that we could pick what to think is true and not true about the world like based solely on which idea would be most convenient you know how does that even constitute belief and there are a lot of things paralaga but <laughs> so to that. Do, you, do you really think that god you know would be taken in by this con game but i wanted to gusto ko balik lahat ng questions and sa kanila like do you really think that's what your god wants from his followers his her followers you know uh, an insincere self-serving like uh, wink wink i'm covering my basis version of belief just so i could enter your kingdom or what so there's really a lot of things wrong with that wager and it they've been using that parang to to scare the the be Jesus out of us <laughs> to scare <laughs> us <laughs> that's true i remember some some something um diba i i mentioned that uh, my mom is a member of this catholic org mm-hmm. and then there was there something happened that there was a faction sa org nila <laughs> so so um it got divided and then the other this faction the the other group said that uh the other group is into witchcraft and all that <laughs> na parang they are already speaking in tongues and all so i asked my mom uh which group do you belong to now and she said she belongs to the group the original the original original group, talaga uh, yung original talaga na finorm ng leader nila mm-hmm. so i i asked her what if you're wrong and the other group is the right group for you to join but she didn't answer me of course uh it was um she was having a dissonance so she didn't answer <laughs> um i just asked her that before <laughs> when when there was a faction a group nila so yeah so that pascal swager can be asked even in faction small groups like that parang what if you're wrong and the other group is the right group diba mm-hmm. so how would you know should you transfer <laughs> to should you ask should uh would you ask someone would you <laughs> would you make sure na 
the truth between the two groups would coincide with what you believe. So, parang ganun. You're wasting, it's just a waste of time for me believing in a deity. Uh, it is. Kasi, yeah. if you're gonna think about it, um, like, hell and heaven are future dated and your only proof to getting there is when you die so instead like i feel bad for those people who have waited all their lives who have missed out the important um present moment because they've been you know they've been flying um high enough already into bahala kasi heaven and heaven Basta sa heaven ako. Alam ko, kung mamamatay ako, heaven ako. Yan ang parati nilang, anyway, I feel bad for that. But at the same time, those people, those believers feel bad for me as well. Because, of course, they know that my soul is gonna go to hell. So, uh, okay. <laughs> Wala tayong magagawa dyan. So, that's why it doesn't really make any sense to make any argument out of it. So I really avoid talking to Theas as much as possible. That's one of the reasons why I did not come out to my friends. Um, even when my family found out of my stand, I, I've, I've had such a very difficult, uh, what do you, uh, well, let's just say battle because um, they all blame me for this and that, for the, unfort- the misfortunes, because they're not going to be blessed by God because of me. And I was like, ang selfish naman ang God ninyo. Kasi just because of me, uh, and kayo, devoted kayo, and he's not like going to answer your prayers just because of me. What a bratty baby of a God that would be. So, yeah. That's true. Um, it's like, it's, uh, iba naman yung sa mom ko, because I think she looks at this at me as an atheist as being a test ni god sa kanya mm. <laughs> yeah so i think she but she didn't say it she didn't tell me that but um i assumed because that's how she was implying it eh. so parang nagets ko na maybe she looks at me me being as an uh, me being an atheist as a, a test ni God sa kanya sa kanyang faith parang ganun <laughs> good luck with your mom <laughs> yeah so <laughs> kailangan talaga ma-convert ka para ma-overcome niya yung <laughs> test mm-hmm. of faith yeah cuz i think um catholicism i'm not sure i remember something na if they save someone if they mm-hmm. if part of their mission is to save another soul so they can enter the gates of heaven. Parang ganun. Yeah. Really? <laughs> so, like, I, I always tell my friends, you know, do you even remember um, the place where you at before you were born? You know, if you're gonna talk about exactly. that, do you remember the place? Because that's where you're going when you die. You wouldn't remember anything. <laughs> yeah, you just not exist anymore <laughs> yeah so parang for me it's tiring to think na there's an afterlife after this life and that mm. afterlife you have to worship the god forever and ever forever and ever and ever and ever <sighs> that's celestial north korea <laughs> nga eh. so <laughs> yeah diba so so it's a tiring idea parang nakakapagod isipin na after this tiring life that we have right now, my afterlife that you have to worship a God forever if you enter the gates of heaven. I'd rather go to hell if there's hell. <laughs> burn in. <Yeah. laughs> burn in. Burn, burn for, etern- for eternity. Mm. Something. And Satan has good taste in music too. Oh, so okay, <laughs> diba? okay. I, because I I grew up, I like listening to um rock music and they would always associate it with hail Satan. So ah. I would rather go to hell for that. And when my dad died, uh, okay. So my mom asked me, "Kasi paano ka 
um, what will happen to you when you die? Because she thinks that my dad was like a sacrificial lamb for me, but the Lord is calling me already, you know, to to accept him just so. Kaya yung way ni God daw is to sacrifice my dad. And like, BS, that doesn't make any sense. My dad was sick. That's why he, he passed away. And besides, you know, it, it sickens me to think about that immortality. I'd rather like enjoy the life that I can grasp at the moment, you know, um, spend time with my, my siblings, my, my husband, my, my family, friends, or people close to me, appreciate every moment, uh, uh, treasure um, moments that I can as much as possible. Um, instead of parang buhay ka pa, naglulong ka na ng langit, tapos ayaw mo namang mauna, it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. It's like you're alive but you're not really here anymore. <laughs> but mm. you don't even want to to be there yet. Mm. So but <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's it's like um the situation uh that's happening now with the pandemic. Parang we devout believers would say we can't get covid because we have the the we have the holy blood of jesus then why don't you become a frontliner we remove the doctors we remove the nurses and you mm-hmm. go ahead and treat the sick the the covid victims or the patients kasi hindi ka naman why do you have to wear a mask diba so <laughs> exactly <laughs> go ahead oh, before that trip, but i i can just share quick i i had a friend who got um covid so she was in the hospital for 31 days and when she got out she was like praise be the lord you know the strength that i have is not from the doctors or the healthcare workers who attended to me but from god and i was like that is bs hindi ka na lang sana nagpa hospital and then she stopped talking to me anyway so <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so why do you have to why do you have to rely on uh science and admit yourself sa sa hospitals mm. and be under the care of doctors and nurses if if si God lang pala yung <laughs> makaka-cure God sa... sent those people raw eh. <laughs> Instrumento ni God yung mga tao. So, <laughs> basically, we're okay. puppets lang. And God is a puppeteer. Okay. So, we have, um, I think, we finished all the questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I am really interested to talk with you more. Irishka, in the future. I hope we can talk again. I really want to talk to you again in the future if we get to have this opportunity again. Uh, mag-discuss lang. It's not really an interview anymore, right? So it's more like a discussion. Yeah, sure we can. Okay. Uh, we can, I know, with Patas, you can join. Our, I know you're from Butuan, but you, you're welcome to join our um, group. Yeah, we have yes, a- yes. Um, I follow. Growing. I follow the page in Facebook, <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm a little bit updated because mm-hmm. lumalabas naman siya sa news feed ko. So before we end this discussion, Irishka, um, what can you say to everyone or specifically theists? Na would say atheists are um, evil, immoral. Um, godless well we are godless but <laughs> um, immoral people your message I you know I don't really want to bash them just because you are entitled to your very own opinion and I don't really care whether you call me a bad person just because I don't believe in your God but not to brag I even fed and um, I've even fed more children than, than you I <laughs> Yeah, so yun lang. Um, I've probably had more good deeds than you, so I wouldn't tap into that. So yun lang. Yeah, we're just we're humans. Mm-hmm. We also have feelings. Aside from Irishka and I being heathens and 
uh, we don't believe in gods and we're both agnostic atheists, but we're human. Both of us are humans and we have different interests. We have hobbies, we have husbands, and we spend time with our family. Yun lang talaga ang common denomination namin. But you see, we're, we can have a decent discussion about, about any topic, di ba? So, yeah. So, I really want to thank you. And I hope, Irishka, that we can have a very good idea <laughs> that you mentioned. Na maybe we can set up our own YouTube channel in the future, di ba? Okay, let's pray for that. <laughs> let's pray. <I'll> pray. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you also, um, John and Jessa, for having this chance. And if someone in here from Mindanao or from Davao watching, you can join our group. It's Patas Davao Chapter. So, pwede lang naman siyang search. And, Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for this everyone uh, for watching, and I'll see you again, Irishka. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.